Hello students, hope you are doing good. Today we will see the IC engine components one by one. Before this, this is the introduction of engine. What is engine that already we have seen in the basic thermodynamics and we have also studied some thermodynamic cycles on which engine works. So the engine is nothing but the device which transforms one form of the energy into another form. And it is classified into two types internal combustion engine and external combustion engine as engine converts chemical energy of fuel into some heat and then this heat is utilized to convert into some work so this fuel if it is burned inside the engine then it is called as internal combustion engine and if the fuel is burned outside the engine then it is called as external combustion engine here the classification you can see here IC engines that is internal combustion engines are further classified into rotary and reciprocating engine. In rotary engine we have the open cycle gas turbine and Wankel engine. And in the reciprocating internal combustion engine we have gasoline engine and diesel engine. External combustion engines are also reciprocating and rotary and their subtypes are steam engine, Stirling engine, steam turbine, closed cycle gas turbine. In this subject we concentrate our attention to the gasoline engine and the diesel engine that is petrol engine and diesel engine we can also call it as SI engine and CI engine the same classification is shown here also in a different manner and our topic of interest is spark ignition that is SI engine and compression ignition that is CI engines so as I have already told you today we will see the basic components of IC engines so here you can see the line diagram of IC engine so one by one we'll see all these components and their function so here I will read the names so we'll start from left upper side inlet wall which gets open and closed when we need to take in the fuel air mixture in case of SI engine and air only in case of CI engine inlet manifold which takes fuel air mixture to the engine then air and fuel will enter through the inlet manifold and inlet wall then we have connecting rod which connects piston and crank next is crank pin crank sump where the oil is there for lubrication crank case that is covering crankshaft which rotates the reciprocating motion of piston is converted into rotary motion of the crankshaft cylinder block gudgeon pin piston cylinder exhaust manifold and exhaust fall now we will see all these components one by one so these are the components that we have to see cylinder block piston combustion chamber inlet manifold exhaust manifold inlet and exhaust valves spark plug connecting rod crankshaft piston rings gudgeon pin camshaft cams and flywheel so first one is the cylinder block here you can see the cylinder block of uh, one large size engine here you can see the number of cylinders are there so what is cylinder block actually it is nothing but the main supporting structure for various components all other components of IC engine are mounted on this the cylinder is nothing but the cylinder of multi cylinder engine are cast as a single unit and called cylinder block to this cylinder block cylinder head head is held tight to the cylinder block by the number of bolts and studs the inner surface of cylinder block which is machined and finished accurately to cylindrical shape is called as bore or face so you can see here all these uh, cylinders you can see in this uh, picture uh, you can see the four cylinders and how these are machined from inside and how the arrangement of nuts and bolts are there so all other components can be mounted on this so it forms the cylinder block forms the basic framework of the engine it houses engine cylinders where combustion takes place and serves as a bearing and guide for the piston reciprocating in that cylinder it carries lubricating oil to various components through drilled passages 
at the lower end of the crankcase is cast integral with the block at the top is attached the cylinder head along with the other parts like timing gear water pump ignition distributor flywheel fuel pump etc are also attached to the cylinder block around cylinders there are passages for circulation of uh, cooling air or cooling water or the specific coolant according to the type of engine so here we'll see some images of cylinder or cylinder block here in this you can see it is a cylinder of a uh, single cylinder ic engine and cylinder and cylinder block is uh, almost the same thing in case of the single cylinder ic engine so cylinder is nothing but the cylindrical vessel or space in which the piston makes a reciprocating motion and also the combustion of fuel happen inside this cylinder cylinder is supported in cylinder block the next component of ic engine is nothing but the piston the piston is cylindrical vessel or space in which the piston makes a reciprocating motion cylinder is supported in cylinder block here you can see the different pistons are there left hand side there is a cross section view is shown so how the crank can be connected that arrangement you can see on the left side image and right side images are there uh, one two three and four pistons are there and some grooves are there these grooves are there for the piston rings so next we'll see the piston ring also the combustion chamber the cylinder block cylinder and combustion chamber is almost the same thing where the piston reciprocate where the fuel burns and these gases will exert a pressure on piston during the power stroke so the combustion chamber is nothing but the combustion chamber the space enclosed in upper part of the cylinder by the cylinder head and the piston top during the combustion process is called as combustion chamber the combustion of fuel and the consequent release of thermal energy results in the building of pressure in this part of the cylinder simply the combustion chamber is the place where the fuel combustion takes place heat is released and that pressure is imparted on piston and finally it is converted into some rotary motion next part is the inlet manifold it is nothing but the pipe which connects the exhaust system to the inlet wall of the engine and through which air or air and fuel mixture as per the engine is drawn into the cylinder is called as inlet manifold here in the diagram you can see there is an inlet manifold and six cylinder engine is there so from inlet manifold the fuel and air mixture or the air is given to the six different cylinders next is exhaust manifold so the pipe which connects the exhaust system to exhaust wall of the engine and through which the products of combustion escape into the atmosphere is called as exhaust manifold so here you can see the products of combustion after leaving from combustion chamber through the exhaust wall will enter to the silencer of the bike or the car so the pipe which connects this exhaust wall to the or uh, exhaust system is called as the exhaust manifold next is inlet and exhaust valves valves are commonly mushroom shaped and pocket type that you can see in the magnified diagram these are provided on cylinder head inlet valve regulates the charge coming into the cylinder charge means fuel and air mixture and exhaust valve discharges the products of combustion the inlet valve uh, get open during the suction stroke and get closed in remaining strokes whereas the exhaust valve opens when there is a discharge stroke and get closed in the remaining strokes on left hand side you can see the total engine and how valves are mounted at the cylinder head or at the top inlet and exhaust in between this there is a spark plug or the fuel injector and on the right side you can see the valve image magnified here you can see the valve along with its spring next is the spark plug as we have seen the ic engines are classified into si engine or ci engine si means spark ignition ci means compression ignition 
a spark ignition engine spark plug is required to initiate the combustion so usually it is located on the cylinder heads and nowadays you can see in some engines more than one spark plug also can be used for the single cylinder for the effective combustion of the fuel so the detailed cross section diagram is there on the left hand side whereas the actual image of the spark plug you can see on the right hand side next is connecting rod it interconnects piston and crankshaft and transmits the gas forces from piston to the crankshaft during the last industrial visit to sdf tractors we have seen all these engine components at that time also i have explained to you uh, in the company itself sdf weldor and we have seen assembly of all these engine components and we have uh, clearly seen the connecting rod at that time so it has the two ends one is small end and one is big end that you can easily see in the diagram small end is connected to the piston with the help of gudgeon pin whereas big end is connected to the crankshaft by using crank pin next is the crankshaft this is converts or it converts the reciprocating motion of piston into the useful rotary motion and finally it can be given to the wheels in case of the automobile application so crankshaft is enclosed in the crank shape crankcase and it is connected to the piston with the help of the connecting rod that you can see here so this connecting rod helps to convert the reciprocating motion of the piston into the rotary motion of the crankshaft on left hand side diagram you can see there is a single connecting rod and a uh, crankshaft is there whereas in the right side diagram there is a four cylinder engine is there and how the crankshaft is connected to that four cylinder engine and along with the flywheel that black colored is nothing but the flywheel next piston rings here on the right side diagram you can see the piston along with the connecting rod so on the periphery of the piston on the upper side there are some grooves are there so in this grooves these piston rings are fitted into the slots around this piston so this piston ring provide a tight seal between piston and cylinder wall preventing the leakage of combustion gases so that necessary pressure can be maintained in the combustion chamber and that can be converted into the motion next is the gudgeon pin so it links small end of the connecting rod and the piston so it has uh, some small components like circle clip short arm of connecting rod then there is a needle sleeve bearing is there because it need to allow some motion of the small end of the connecting rod gudgeon pin and again another side circle clip here you can see the actual image the magnified image of gudgeon pin also on the right side next is the camshaft camshaft and its associate parts control the opening and closing of the two valves inlet valve and exhaust valve the associate parts for the camshaft are push rods rocker arm wall spring and tappets camshaft also provides the drive to the ignition system camshaft is driven by the crankshaft through timing gears here you can see the diagram of the camshaft so this is on left hand side diagram you can see there is a four cylinder engine four pistons are there and at the top of the piston there are the eight valves four inlet valve and four exhaust valve and how the camshaft allows the opening and closing of this it is shown so the cam are there on the camshaft with the green color so that when this will come in contact with that wall it will get open and it will get closed it is a spring loaded on the right hand side diagram the magnified image you can see when this cam rotates along with the camshaft so at some point of time the wall will get open and when uh, in the next part of the rotation due to the return spring or the as it is a spring loaded it will regain its original position that it will get closed and for some period of time that is during suction stroke inlet wall get open and during exhaust stroke the exhaust wall will get open so this is the application or the function of the camshaft so in camshaft there are the cams these are made as an integral part of the camshaft and are so designed to open the valves at the correct timing and to keep them open for necessary duration 
so here you can see the actual diagram so already you have designed this cam and follower in the theory of machine subject so the same i am showing you here how the line contact is there how the cam is there how it is connected to the camshaft and what is the follower see one more diagram i am showing you for the cams so the cam follower the disc and in groove that follower is moving and due to this uh, eccentric rotation how the wall will get open the next important part of ic engine is flywheel so here in this diagram again you can see there is a four cylinder engine is there four sharp uh, pistons are there okay these are connected to the crankshaft and at the one end of the crankshaft there is a flywheel is connected so the net torque imparted to the crankshaft during one complete cycle of operation of the engine fluctuates causing a change in the angular velocity of the shaft now to achieve the uniform torque an inertia mass in the form of a wheel is attached to the output shaft so here uh, engine has four stroke the suction stroke compression stroke power stroke and exhaust stroke so in between this four stroke only in the power stroke energy is given and in the remaining stroke suction compression and exhaust energy need to be given to the piston so that the remaining stroke can happen so the fly will store energy by virtue of inertia when there is a power stroke and it gives energy if for the remaining stroke it also decreases the fluctuation the size of the flywheel depends on the size of the engine so the how much energy it need to be stored for remaining three strokes so accordingly the flywheel size is decided so here we have completed almost all important parts of ic engine now we'll see the nomenclature of ic engine in which i will read it first cylinder bore piston area stroke stroke to bore ratio dead centers top dead center bottom dead center inner dead center and outer dead center displacement or soft volume or stroke volume engine capacity or cubic capacity clearance volume compression ratio now first we will see the cylinder bore the nominal inner diameter of working cylinder is known as the cylinder bore in both the diagram you can see the hole or the cylinder is there and its inner diameter is nothing but the cylinder bore and it is denoted by the small letter d in left hand side diagram there is a single cylinder and on the right side there is a multi cylinder engine is there four cylinder next is the piston area denoted by the capital letter a the area of a circle of diameter equal to the cylinder bore is nothing but called as the piston area so it is almost equal to pi d square by 4 and where d is nothing but this cylinder bore so here in this diagram you can see the piston and this upper area of the piston is nothing but the piston area next is the stroke the stroke is nothing but the nominal distance through which a working piston moves between two successive reversal of its direction of motion means the distance through which the piston is moving up or down from top dead center to the bottom dead center in case of vertical engine and from inner dead center to the outer dead center in case of the horizontal engine that distance is called as the stroke stroke to bore ratio stroke is denoted by letter l bore is denoted by letter d so l by d is the stroke to bore ratio so according to the value of this ratio the engine is classified according to this three types if diameter is small than the stroke length l then it is called as under square engine if diameter and the stroke length both are equal then it is called as square engine and if the diameter is more than the stroke length then it is called as the over square engine though word square is used in this 
it doesn't mean that your engine is square obviously the cross section of the cylinder or the piston is circular but under square means diameter is less square means diameter is equal to stroke and o square means diameter is more than the length so here one observation we have an o square engine can operate at higher speed because of large bore bore and the shorter stroke and that's why in high speed engines the engines are of o square means diameter is more than the stroke length the next thing we will see the dead center the position of piston at the moment when the direction of piston motion is reversed at either end of the stroke is called as the dead center top dead center the dead center when piston is farthest from the crankshaft when piston is at the upper position or it is also called as the inner dead center in case of the horizontal engines so top dead center is the terminology used when we have the vertical engine and inner dead center we use when the engine is horizontal next is the bottom dead center or outer dead center the dead center when piston is nearest to the crankshaft and away from the cylinder head so that position is called as bottom dead center or the outer dead center so here in this diagram you can clearly see the top dead center and bottom dead center as it is vertical engine only tdc and bdc is written not idc and odc next is displacement volume or swept volume so it is nothing but the nominal volume swept by working piston when traveling from one dead center to the another dead center it is denoted by letter v with suffix s and its value will be equal to a into l where a is the piston area and l is the stroke length here in the diagram you can see from top dead center to the bottom dead center in between that v is this is nothing but the swept volume and the volume above the piston when piston is at top dead center is nothing but called as the clearance volume here you can see from the top dead center some dotted line is there so above that vc is written so this is nothing but the clearance volume and through which area piston moves it is called as the swept volume next is the engine capacity or we also called as the cubic capacity or cc it is nothing but the displacement volume of a cylinder multiplied by number of cylinders in an engine so if it is a single cylinder engine so the engine capacity is nothing but the displacement volume of the cylinder for that one cylinder if it is a multi cylinder engine as shown in figure so the cubic capacity is measured that swept volume of one cylinder into the number of cylinders next is the clearance volume the nominal volume of the combustion chamber above the piston when it is at top dead center or the inner dead center so there is always some gap between the cylinder head and piston when piston is at the top dead center or inner dead center so that gap or that volume is nothing but called as the clearance volume this volume is required or this space is required so that piston should not strike to the inlet wall exhaust wall a spark plug or the fuel injector and it also occupies some uh, product the gas which get compressed in that particular volume next and important is the compression ratio it is nothing but the ratio of total cylinder volume to the clearance volume so here you can see in the formula compression ratio is equal to total volume upon clearance volume so the total volume that is when piston is at bottom dead center the volume is there in the cylinder is the total volume upon swept volume means when piston is at top dead center so it can be also written as swept volume plus clearance volume upon clearance volume it is nothing but the compression ratio so this si engine and ca engine which we are going to see in this are run on the auto cycle and diesel cycle this is in these are the name of scientist nicolas otto who has proposed the si or the auto cycle in 1876 and rudolf diesel who proposed the diesel cycle in 1892 
Here we'll see the working of four stroke SI engine. So in this four diagrams, four strokes of SI engine are explained. In the first diagram is the intake stroke or the suction stroke. During the intake stroke, piston moves from top dead center to the bottom dead center. Arrow shows the direction of movement of the piston and inlet valve is open. During this air and fuel mixture from the carburetor, then inlet manifold and through the inlet wall enters the combustion chamber till the piston reaches to the bottom dead center this movement of piston from top dead center to the bottom dead center is nothing but the suction stroke in which piston moves from one dead center to the another dead center and crank completes pi rotation or 180 degree rotation in the next stroke when piston starts moving from bottom dead center to the top dead center in the second diagram you can see the direction of movement of piston and inlet and outlet both valves are closed and this fuel and air which is inside the cylinder during suction stroke get compressed that's why it is called as the compression stroke at the end of compression stroke there is a spark is ignited and combustion of this air and fuel starts so then the third diagram is nothing but the power stroke due to the combustion of gases there is a pressure rise and this pressure forces the piston from top dead center to the bottom dead center in third diagram you can see the piston is moving from top dead center to the bottom dead center crank again completes next pi rotation or 180 degree rotation and power stroke is completed fourth and final stroke of cycle is nothing but the exhaust stroke Piston moves from bottom dead center to the top dead center. Outlet valve is open. Piston moves from BDC to TDC and due to its movement, the products of combustion move out through exhaust wall, then exhaust manifold and then silencer. So this is nothing but the exhaust stroke. That's why this engine is called as four stroke. One cycle is completed in four stroke, suction, compression, power and exhaust here you can see the cycle 1 to 2 is nothing but the suction volume decreases from v1 to v2 so here in this slide you can see the four stroke si engine cycle that is the auto cycle already we have seen auto cycle we have derived the formula for finding out the efficiency in basic thermodynamics so 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 and 4 to 1 so here it is the auto cycle so we'll not uh, discuss now auto cycle we'll move to the next one here you can see the similarly as that of si engine here we have the four strokes of ci engine the strokes are same the suction or intake compression then combustion and exhaust the only difference here is that the combustion here starts due to the increase in temperature of air which get compressed here there is no spark plug is provided and fuel is injected at the end of compression during the suction stroke or during the intake stroke there is only air which enters the combustion chamber and fuel is injected at the end of compression stroke when due to the compression air temperature is increased and due to this high rise or the increased temperature the combustion process start so here instead of spark plug the fuel injector is provided so this is the difference between si engine and ci engine the cycle on which it works that also we have completed in the basic thermodynamics here the heat addition is at constant pressure here in the pv diagram you can see here the heat addition 2 to 3 is at constant volume whereas in CI engine the heat addition is at constant pressure. So already we have studied this cycle and we have derived the formula for its efficiency. Now we will compare the SI engine and CI engine with some points. So basic cycle. So SI engine works on the auto cycle. Which is nothing but also called as constant volume heat addition cycle ca engine compression ignition engine 
works on diesel cycle and here heat addition is constant pressure that's why it is also called as constant pressure heat addition cycle fuels used in si engine fuel used is gasoline which is highly volatile fuel the self ignition temperature of the fuel is high whereas in ci engine the fuel used is diesel it is a non volatile fuel self ignition temperature is comparatively low and that's why your spark plug is not required next introduction of fuel in si engine a gaseous mixture of fuel plus air is introduced during the suction stroke a carburetor and an ignition system are necessary in the si engine modern engines have gasoline injection also instead of carburetor what happens in ci engine in ci engine fuel is injected directly into the combustion chamber at high pressure at the end of compression stroke means here fuel will not enter during the suction stroke a fuel pump and fuel injectors are necessary in ci engines next point is load control in si engine throttle controls the quantity of fuel air mixture to control the load so when load is higher so more fuel is given if load is less less fuel is given what happens in ci engine the quality of fuel is regulated to control the load and air quality is not controlled air is taken inside the ci engine during suction stroke next point of difference is ignition si engine requires an ignition system with spark plug in combustion chamber primary voltage is provided by either a battery or a magneto in si engine ci engine self ignition occurs due to the high temperature of air because of the high compression ignition system and spark plug are not required in case of the ci engine next point is compression ratio compression ratio in ci engine sorry in si engine is 6 to 10 upper limit is fixed by anti knock quality of the fuel we'll uh, study knocking and detonation in subsequent parts in ci engine compression ratio is 16 to 20 upper limit is limited by weight increase of the system next point speed due to lightweight and also due to homogeneous combustion they are high speed engines si engines ci engine due to heavy weight and also due to heterogeneous combustion they are low speed engines weight si engines are lighter due to comparatively low peak pressures or we can say the low compression ratio whereas ci engine weights are higher they are heavier due to comparatively higher peak pressures and higher compression ratio thermal efficiency because of the lower compression ratio the maximum value of thermal efficiency that can be obtained is lower in case of si engine because of the higher compression ratio in ci engine the maximum value of thermal efficiency that can be obtained is higher in compression ignition engine so here i have mentioned some applications of si engine and ci engine gasoline engine or the petrol engine or si engines are used in automotive some marine application and aircraft application gas engines are used in industrial power plants diesel engines or compression ignition engines are used in automotive railways power plants and marine applications gas turbine engines are used in power plants aircraft some industrial application and also some marine application thank you